Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'd like to take a brief dive into geometry with a look at triangles, centers, and the nine-point circle. We'll start with a simple question. What's the center of a circle? We could define the center as the point that's the same distance from any two points on the circle. Or we could define it as the intersection point of any two diameters. Or maybe it's the center of symmetry, the point you could rotate the circle around without changing it. There are a lot of definitions you could come up with, and all of them will end up describing the same point. Now for a more interesting question. What's the center of a triangle? For an equilateral triangle, that's easy to answer. There's only one point that really makes sense, and it turns out it's also the center of symmetry. But what about the more general triangle? It turns out there isn't just one answer. There are thousands of points that could make a claim at being the center, and I've linked a whole encyclopedia of them below. But for our purposes today, there are four of particular interest the centroid, the circumcenter, the orthocenter, and the nine-point center. We'll look at each of those one at a time. First, the centroid. Take a vertex and connect it to the midpoint of the opposite side. This line is known as a median. And then draw in the medians for the other two vertices. If you've drawn the diagram carefully, it looks like these three lines all intersect at a point. And in fact, this will be true no matter what triangle we start with. This point is known as the centroid G. But why do these lines have to meet at all? There are some very elegant geometric proofs here, but it's easiest to see this using coordinates. Notice that the midpoint is halfway between B and C, in the x direction, so its x coordinate will be halfway between them, so it's x2 plus x3 over 2. And similarly, it's halfway between b and c in the y coordinate, so it's going to be y2 plus y3 over 2. So the midpoint is going to be the average of its two endpoints. And now we've got two points on our median, A and M, where we know the coordinates. So we can find an equation for the line. And if we do that and also find the equations for the other two lines, then with a bit of algebra, we can see that all three medians pass through this point, x1 plus x2 plus x3 over 3, y1 plus y2, plus y3 over 3. That is, the centroid is the average of the three vertices. Next, we have the circumcenter. Again, we'll start with the midpoint of each side, but instead of connecting it to the opposite vertex, we'll draw the perpendicular. And this line is known as a perpendicular bisector. If we draw in all three, we see that once again, the three lines all meet at a point, known as the circumcenter O. Again, how do we prove it? Well, consider a line segment and its associated perpendicular bisector, and connect any point on that bisector to the two endpoints. Now, it's a bisector, so these two lengths, by definition, must be the same. And it's a perpendicular, so these two angles must both be right angles. And this side here is shared between the two triangles. So by side, angle, side, the two triangles must be congruent. And in particular, that means these two lengths must be the same. So this perpendicular bisector 
is made up of points that are the same distance from the two endpoints. Now let's look at back at this diagram. This bisector here is made of points that are the same distance from B and from C. And this bisector here is made up of points that are the same distance from A and from C. So their intersection point, which is on both lines, must be the same distance from B and from C and from A and from C, which means, by transitivity, it's the same distance from A and from B, which puts it on the third bisector. And therefore, the bisectors all intersect. And since that point, the circumcenter, is the same distance from all three vertices, that means that it's the center of the circle passing through them. The third center I want to talk about is the orthocenter. Drop a perpendicular line from each vertex to the opposite side. These lines are known as altitudes. And as you've probably guessed, once again, they all intersect at a point known as the orthocenter H. We could prove that from scratch again, but there's a clever trick that lets us reuse all that work we've just done. Construct a parallel to each side through the opposite vertex to create a big triangle like this. And it's not too hard to show that these four triangles are all congruent. And you should try that in the comments below. And since these two segments correspond, that means that they must have the same length. So this altitude through A bisects this side. And since BC is perpendicular to this altitude, and this side is parallel to BC, this side must be perpendicular to the altitude, which means that this altitude through A is a perpendicular bisector of this side, and similarly for the other two altitudes. And a moment ago, we proved that the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle all meet at a point. But the perpendicular bisectors of this big triangle are the altitudes of ABC. So the altitudes of ABC must also intersect. And the orthocenter of a triangle is the circumcenter of the doubled triangle. In the process of defining these three centers, we used a few important points, namely the midpoints of each side, which we used to define the medians and the bisectors, and the feet of each of the altitudes. It turns out these six points all lie on a circle. And as you may have guessed from the title, that circle happens to use three more points of interest. This one, this one, and this one, which are the halfway points between the orthocenter and each of the vertices. So why do all of these points lie on a circle? We'll need two more useful facts to get there. First, if we have a triangle and we connect the midpoints of two of the sides, then the resulting line is parallel to the third side. This is fairly easy to prove with similar triangles, so I'll leave that as an exercise for you. The next fact is that if we have a circle with a diameter and we draw two lines through the endpoints, then those lines will be perpendicular if and only if they meet on the circle. This is true because we can take this triangle and flip it to get a rectangle. 
and a rectangle has rotational and axial symmetry. So all of the vertices have to be the same distance from the center. And so this vertex here must be on the circle. With that out of the way, let's get back to the nine-point circle. Here I've just drawn the altitudes and the midpoints, so we've got a bit of space to work, but it's the same diagram we saw before. Now, if we connect these two midpoints, then, as we said a moment ago, this segment will be parallel to the base. And notice that these halfway points on the altitudes are the midpoints of this small triangle down here. So, if we connect those, once again, they'll be parallel to the base. And notice that this midpoint and this halfway point are the midpoints of this triangle up here. And so, if we connect those, this side will be parallel to this side. And this is the altitude, which is perpendicular to the base, so these must be perpendicular. And by the same logic, if we connect these two, this will also be perpendicular. And so what we end up with is a rectangle. And the four corners must therefore lie on a circle. And the diagonals must be the diameters. And doing the same thing with these four points, we get a second rectangle. And notice that this rectangle shares one of its diagonals. And let's draw on the other. And since they have the same diagonal, they must also lie on the same circle. And so these six points lie on a circle. And now notice that this triangle down here has a diameter of the circle as one of its sides. And it also has a right angle, since this is the altitude. By that second fact we mentioned earlier, that means that this vertex here must also lie on that same circle as these six points we saw earlier. And by the same logic, the feet of the other two altitudes must also lie on that circle. So we've shown that in any triangle, these nine points of interest, the midpoints of each side, the feet of each altitude, and the halfway points between the vertices and the orthocenter, all lie on a circle. As a parting thought, I'll mention that the four centers we've discussed today all lie on a line known as the Euler line. In fact, the centroid will be a third of the way from the circumcenter to the orthocenter, and the nine-point center will be at their midpoint. I'll leave that proof as an exercise for you. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.